Yo, yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to the vibe. It's Mr. Nobody Calm Vibes, and we're back in here again. All right. Today, we are going to talk about the independent one and what makes them so great. Man, that shit is almost hilarious. But we're not going to dive too much into it. I just want y'all to see all the hard work they have to do being an independent one. But check this out. This one little thing that stirred a lot of women up. Check this out real quick. See, that little statement got so many women riled up in the black community. But what I'm noticing, it's not just black women. It's all type of women that feel the same way. Like they don't need a man. Not alone a black man. They don't need a man at all. So, again, let's check out all these great independent women out here doing it by themselves. Mm. So proud of you. Check it out. As a strong, independent Black woman myself, I can confidently say that I speak for us all when I tell you that no Black woman is that way because she wants to be. Show me a strong, independent Black woman and I'll show you a Black woman who has had a man drop the ball at some point in her life, be it her dad, her child's father, a man she was with, some man from her past dropped the ball in order for that woman to be that way. And so as a result of that, she has had to put on the britches and become a man herself. As black women, we so desperately want to be soft, submissive. We want to follow you. We want to be all of that for our men. And trust me, no matter how strong and independent we are, we will be all of those things. If we see that we have a man in front of us that's worth submitting to. But no woman who has had full her soak up and dwell on her own for so long is going to submit to a man unless he has shown himself worth. So, dear men, if you want us to submit, Give us something to submit to. This chick really thought she was saying something. That I'm going to be absolutely certain that I don't need nobody for nothing. And I will prove that to you if you question that in any kind of way. Um, however, it's been 10,000 miles since my last oil change. <laughs> you know how many times my man has been like, I'm going to take your car and get an oil change. And I convince him that like, no, don't do not disturb your life i will take care of my own vehicle i will go get the oil change i promise i'm gonna do it on my next day off it ain't happening <laughs> i'm gonna blow this engine before i admit that i fucking need somebody jesus christ that shit hilarious you heard the first one the first the black lady was talking uh, you know when she finished she turned her head like she really said something mm -mm. what you don't understand is we don't have to take it. Stay independent. Stay out there on your own. Be like the second lady. You about to blow your damn car up before you ask for help. And she said she has a man. So, is he there just for sex? Makes no sense to me. But you still got him there, so you need him for something. But you're going to blow the engine on your car before you ask him to take it over to the damn Jiffy Loop. Something that simple. So, the day after International Women's Day, my fucking roof blew off. And I was like, my husband's away. And he went away like three years ago um, to work. And I don't know how to do anything. Grew up with a dad, three brothers who did everything. Lived in condos, they did everything. Moved in with a man, he did everything. 
So for all the talk about living wild and free, <laughs> uh, three years ago, I had to learn how to take care of myself. I was paying people for the first year and then I was like, fuck that shit, I can do it. So I learned how to use a lawnmower. I did not learn how to reshingle a house. I had help for that. Um, and today I am literally wearing my husband's clothes, plowing the driveway and doing backbreaking shoveling. And I kind of like, fuck this independent woman bullshit. It's nice that I can do it, but one thing that I've learned in the last three years is, damn, I don't want to. So I managed to get this out. Oh, let's carry a chair alone. Go, boss. So I put that in. So I really want to get that to go in that way. So at this stage, I was like, oh my God, can I even do this? Anyway, I started more. This was hard. Literally, <laughs> one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Seriously, I've tried to, you know, fix up a fridge, fix up a washing machine, but this was hard. I don't know what even pushed me to think I could do this. Anyway, I was like, I must do this, so uh, I must do this. After this video, there's no way I'm going to stop. So I kept trying, and then I just noticed that I kind of almost saw something. I was like, oh my God. Anyway, I got I got this couch for fifty dollars, and it was more like um, you know a very good price if you would ask me. And with the prices on you know online, it was selling at um, around three hundred. But I had to wash it. I washed the couch, you know, the couch linen. And after this, I literally had to clean it up and you know vacuum and wash it all again. Anyway, this was me trying to put it on. Oh God, I was crying. If I tell you I was not crying, I'm lying. Hey, God. Anyway, that's it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how it's going. <laughs> this washing machine was just annoying me. It was just at the wrong place. I wish I put this chair first before putting my washing machine in. But I didn't stop. I kept going. I kept going. I kept going. <laughs> I've never been frustrated with the washing machine than this day. Okay, let's see, let's see. I think, um, yeah, good, good, good. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah! You know what happened? I just realized that... It's cold as balls outside. I'm actually not exactly sure what that reference is to because... They're kind of connected to a body, and never mind. Um, so I got another propane tank the other day, and I stuck it in the other side, and it lasted just a tiny bit longer than the other one did. So I have to hire somebody to come out here and go through the lines for this trailer, and I don't have the fucking money for it. I have a space heater, so it's keeping us warm enough, but at the same time, I have no hot water. This is so dumb. Okay, after crying for a little while, and calling up a friend who has a repair company um it's gonna cost them 125 dollars to come out here because they moved further away so it's paying for fuel and they're gonna bill me but i don't know how much it's gonna come up to but they said i can make payments um that's just another fucking thing i have to worry about i need to get a different job but i need to stick this one out for a year because i've been looking at so many different companies and they need a year of experience and i am fucking struggling and i can't get above it and it's just making me so mad and I don't want to give up I'm not that person but I'm not sure what I'm going to do because I can't pay my fucking bills and I'm working so hard so it's going to be in about an hour before they get here and I have to go pull a bunch of stuff out of the under storage area so that they have access because they charge a hundred and something dollars an hour and if I get that cleared out it's going to take them less time because they won't have to worry about figuring out how to access it so I'm going to get bundled up and go outside and get that taken care of and hopefully when they get here they can just hook up whatever they need to hook up if they need to change something they can change it and then i'll just have to figure out what that bill is going to be when it comes and figure out a way to pay it. doing this alone kind of sucks but it's better than my previous situation it's just hard we are y'all starting to get us fucking confused all right we're not gold diggers we're independent women right so if you are an independent woman and you do everything the fuck by yourself, you're alone, you're singular, you're not with a motherfucker, a motherfucker ain't around you, you by yourself, right? All right, catch this. Now, as a singular woman, independent woman, right, 
you clearly already been doing everything by yourself. You're used to being alone. You've mastered being alone. And you do everything by your fucking self. You take care of yourself. You provide and nurture yourself. And this is what gets me, right? Because this is what gets me, right? Okay. Independent women. Already scheduled. Routine. Everything is up to par and consistent, right? You're pampering. You're taking care of yourself. Providing for yourself. For yourself. By yourself. So why the fuck? Do you think an independent woman would want a man to drop himself in the middle of her fucking life that does not even know how to participate or does not feel any obligation to want to do these things for this woman who's already been doing these things for herself, by herself. But you want to be alone with me together? Boy, you concerned with individualism, and I'm going to cautiously say we are overly concerned with hyper-independence too. And that hyper-independence has led to immense levels of stress, burnout, and resentment in high achievers especially. Yes, we know that most of us developed hyper-independence at an early age as a survival mechanism, but here's what else I know. High achievers don't ask for much help. After decades of refusing help, we eventually reach a state of severe burnout, which induces feelings of embarrassment, frustration, loneliness, and disconnect. And the cure? Vulnerability and identity work where we learn to accept that our worth does not come from our work. Ooh, and that is not an easy task. Because once you've developed this persona as the person who handles it all, doesn't ruffle any feathers, and identifies as the go-to responsible one, you don't know how to step out of that persona, ask for help, and receive. Because that might threaten your perceived sense of love, safety, and belonging via your acceptance and praise as your high achiever status. One of the best things that I did for myself in my early 20s was getting rid of internalized misogyny, which for me manifested as hyper-independence. Like I wanted to do everything by myself, for myself, to a fault. And in relationships, this attracted like very leechy guys that kind of just like absorbed all of my energy and just took and took and took. And I felt like the giving tree. And I think inherently as a girl, when you like realize that that's the energy that your partner is giving off, like you just become like super unattracted to them. So it was a lot of trial and error. And I was like very confused as to why things weren't working out. And then from a work perspective, I was so bad at asking for help. And I was constantly stressed, like burnt out, like thought about nothing except for work, was just like constantly running on zero. For context, I work in the finance industry. And in hindsight, I realize now that my male coworkers respect me more now that I'm girlier and I feel more comfortable asking for help than they did when I was trying to be like, more of a bro and like act like one of them like it smells fake they can see through the fact that it's an act and because it wasn't genuine like they weren't really like respecting me as much as they do now when i'm kind of like more vulnerable i see this with so much of my generation though and younger generations like i think it's a part of girl boss culture and a few other things like new waves of feminism that kind of teach you to dislike some components of like your natural essence. I think if you can kind of catch on to where you're pushing people away because you think it'll make them respect you more, value you more, you'll actually start to move five times faster if you feel more comfortable and learn to lean into asking for help. If it helps, men don't think twice about asking for anything. They just take. So just be a taker. And then we have hungry ass man. Yeah, you know the ones. They'll give you ladies all the feel good words, words that y'all need to make y'all feel so good about being so independent. You know, the Captain Saber Yo's. Yeah, that's what we call them, the Captain Saber Yo's. Check him out in his pandering mode. But complaining about these independent women. If you not a man, it's gonna be a solution to that. The reason why there's so many independent women out here is because like you be so not dependable this guy gives me slight pandering vibes Derek jackson vibes and let me explain it just feels like people who make this sort of content sometimes just regurgitate what they hear on podcasts or on tiktok and just like repurpose it for their specific videos because to make the assertion that women are independent because men aren't dependable feels very Twitter-ish, right? It feels like Twitter logic. It, it just isn't a true statement. Women are independent because for centuries, women have been fighting for their autonomy so they could have basic human rights and the ability to control 
their own life. Like women's independence has nothing to do with men not being dependable. Creators like him just give me a very inauthentic vibe. I can't quite put my finger on it, but that's how I feel. Watch out for that dolly. I am losing my shit. I bought this. I bought this. I don't know, like two weeks ago. And I cannot open it. I physically cannot open it. Usually, I'm really strong. And I can open it by myself. But I can't. And I refuse to ask anyone for help. And I've been trying for two weeks now. <laughs> and I really want to eat those. Like, I'm craving them for two weeks now, but I cannot open it. I'm this close to just either break it or buy a new one. I, I cannot. I don't get it. I, does anyone have anything, anyways, how to open this fucking shit? I really want to eat it. And I will not ask any man in my life. I do not care. You cut off your nose to spite your face. Modern women. Excellent logic. Hey, y'all. In honor of Black History Month, I just want to motivate us women, us Black women, to stay independent. Like, we don't need to depend on no man for nothing. We can do anything that we set our mind to. So tonight, I'm fixing this. My son then went through his blinds again for the umpteen time, and I'm going to independently change them because that's what us boss women do. So let's get it. Don't, don't do it. You only have to say nothing. I already know. I, I know. I've reached this point in my life where the strong, independent woman phase is dying down, like slowly dying down. Like I'm tired. I've been going at it since I was 13 years old, whether that's a, being a full-time employee, a student, or a stay-at-home mom of three kids who were all homeschooled. Me, I'm tired. And I've reached this point in my life where I have to really listen to myself. I have to listen to my body and my mental health is more important than trying to do it all on my own. And it's, it's a lot, y'all. Like trying to do this on your own is a lot, especially after going through a divorce and literally transitioning my life to being a single mom. It's a lot, okay? But I've reached this point in my life where I now have to start delegating things, okay? Get somebody else to do it. Get somebody else to clean my house weekly. Get somebody else to do my yard. Get somebody to do grocery shop for me. And I literally just don't have the time and the mental capacity anymore to continue trying to live about this image of being a strong, independent woman. I'm not. I'm a damsel in distress. I need help. Save me. Because my husband's not here and I gotta go shovel some snow. I don't want to shovel snow. Like I'm really upset that I have to actually, <laughs> but I have to go and shovel this snow. Yeah. Oh wow, this is a lot of snow. Lots of snow that I have to shovel. Standing. We got a lot of snow. I have to do this. With inflation going up, gas has gone up, food has gone up, rent has gone up, less people are able to get into homes. You're seeing uh, more women embrace the van life because they can't afford to be in an actual home or apartment. You are seeing rates of eviction go up for black women. You're seeing rates of unemployment. So while these women are, are complaining that men are going abroad to exploit poor women, these women are poor. You are making $40,000 or less and you are, li especially if you're living in a city or, or a big city and you have a child, like you are not boss babin flexing, uh, you're not doing that. And this is no shade to anybody who's working class or who is building their wealth because it's been a rough time for a lot of people in the pandemic. But the issue is how you gonna go and try to shame the very same women who are probably living the same kind of lifestyle that you are. Living in your van, talking about live your soft life, being unemployed. Do y'all see how hypocritical this is? I'm almost falling off the deep end. <laughs> I know I'm smiling right now, but the light inside me is dying. Okay, you wanna know what gets on my nerves the most is when people are like, oh, Autumn, you're a travel nurse. You must have so much money, ha 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 No, I don't. No, I don't. You wanna know why? You wanna know? 
This is my right here. This wall, you see it? You see it? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to throw a little pizzazz in my kitchen. You know, give a little, mm, a sprinkle of flair. You know, some Southern girl sweet cuteness. And I can't, I can't. You wanna know why? Cause your bitch don't know how to measure. I don't understand it. This is the third roll of wallpaper I've bought. All my money's going to wallpaper. I like, I don't know what to do. It is hard. It is hard being a strong independent woman out in these trenches. Send help. Send the National Guard. Send the SWAT. Send a carpenter. Like, send someone that knows how to use a damn tape measure. And then that's another thing. I'm blind. Y'all see? Look how thick them, look out. Like, they are not for show. I cannot see. And they put all these little marks on the tape measure. I can't count, I get cross-eyed, I lose my place. I'm winging it, I'm winging it. And she ain't looking good, she ain't looking good. Yeah, from, and look when you get up on this. She is rough. Look at that leaf, that poor leaf. He got a crick. Oh, but, but when you back up, she cute, you can't even tell. Mm, yes ma'am, but when you get close, Look at that, look, look, she just patched in, just patched, just, look at that strip, all cockeyed, oh baby, whew, it's gonna be okay. So there you have it guys, there you have it, our independent women, they sound so freaking happy, don't they? Well, I don't understand why, like the other lady, she was just so angry. If you want to be by yourself, then be by your fucking self. Don't get mad that you want to be by yourself. If you don't want a man in your life, hell, yeah, we ain't got to be there. But don't complain about it when we're not there. If you want to be an independent woman, you shouldn't even be making this shit. But let's let them be. Because there's a lot of pandering dudes out there give y'all some more feel-good words to make y'all feel this way. But understand, winter is coming. And the wall is close. But guys, this JP, also known Mr. Nobody, up in the vibe. I'm up out of here. Y'all stay vibing. Peace.